Les Canadiennes et les Canadiens veulent que leurs leaders soient ouverts et directs envers eux, qu'ils leur disent la vérité, qu'ils s'attendent à ce qu'ils soient proactifs en leur proposant des solutions pratiques qui traitent les problèmes directement. Canadiens veulent des leaders qui sont ouverts et straight avec eux et qui leur disent la vérité. Ils expectent de venir avec des solutions pratiques qui traitent les problèmes directement. directly. The Senate has become one of those problems. That I have heard clearly from Canadians. The Senate is broken and needs to be fixed. At the same time, Canadians do not want to reopen the Constitution. They don't want a long, rancorous and lightly, likely pointless debate with the provinces that would distract us from focusing on more important problems. They want leaders who will help us build an economy that works for all of us in which everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. They want us focused on their jobs, their pensions, and a good future for their kids. Let us begin with partisanship. The Senate was once referred to as a place of sober second thought, a place that allows for re reflective deliberation on legislation, in-depth studies into issues of import to the country, and, to a certain extent, to provide a check and balance on the politically driven House of Commons. It has become obvious that the party structure within the Senate interferes with these responsibilities. Instead of being separate from political or electoral concerns, senators now must consider not just what's best for their country or their regions, but what's best for their party. At best, this renders the Senate redundant. At worst, and, thus, and under Mr. Harper, we have seen it at its worst. It amplifies the Prime Minister's power. That is why I have come to believe that the Senate must be nonpartisan, composed merely of thoughtful individuals representing the varied values, perspectives, and identities of this great country, independent from any particular political brand. Et puisque je crois que le vrai and because I believe that real leadership is not only about making electoral promises, I am taking immediate action as of today. Matin, Starting this morning, only members of Parliament, elected MPs, will be members libéral. of the Liberal Caucus. The 32 Liberal Senators will, starting today, become independent of our National Liberal Caucus and will no longer be members of our parliamentary team. There will no longer be any Liberal Senators. I'd like to make myself perfectly clear. The only way uh, to be part of the Liberal Caucus is uh, to have been chosen by Canadians in an election. And since I believe that real leadership is not just about making campaign promises, I'm taking immediate action today. As of this morning, only elected members of the House of Commons will serve as members of the Liberal Caucus. The 32 formerly Liberal Senators are now independent of the National Liberal Caucus. They are no longer part of our parliamentary team. There are no more Liberal Senators. Let me be perfectly clear. The only way to be a part of the Liberal Caucus is to be put there by the people of Canada. Further, I challenge the Prime Minister to match this action. As the majority party in the Senate, immediate and comprehensive change is in Conservative hands. I'm calling on the Prime Minister to do the right thing, to join us in making Senators independent of political parties and end partisanship in the Senate. And by ending partisanship now, we can also end patronage going forward. The Senate of Canada is a private institution. It should not be run like the Prime Minister's private club. So here's what I'm going to do about it. I am committing today that if I earn the privilege of serving Canadians as their Prime Minister, I will put in place an open, transparent, nonpartisan public process for appointing and confirming Senators. Je mettrai fin I will put an end to the closed-door process. No more secret deliberations. The announcements right before Christmas will be ended. 
tous we mal servis dans la façon dont les sénateurs by the way, senators are les Canadiens appointed. en particulier, and oui, Canadians in particular, mais aussi les députés de la Chambre des Communes, et même les sénateurs Commons, sont discrédités par de vieilles conventions qui stipulent que leur nomination doit se faire par une seule personne. No more closed doors. No more secretive deliberations. No more announcements the week before Christmas under cover of darkness. We are all poorly served by the way in which senators are appointed, Canadians especially, but also members of the House of Commons, even senators themselves, are discredited by the antiquated convention that sees senators appointed by one person and by one person only. Eight years ago, Mr. Harper railed against this convention as leader of the opposition and committed to change it. As we know all too well, he didn't. In fact, he embraced this archaic process. As Prime Minister, he has made 59 appointments, despite his promise to appoint zero. In fact, Mr. Harper is the only Prime Minister in 147 years of this country to appoint the same two people to the Senate twice. All of these people share one characteristic. The Prime Minister and the Prime Minister alone judged them to be useful to himself and to his party. Mike Duffy, Pam Wallen, Patrick Brazo, Irving Gerstein are merely particularly egregious examples of where this leads. It shows that Mr. Harper and the Conservatives have been in power so long that they can no longer tell the difference between their party's interest and the public interest. That's poor judgment, and more than that, it's just plain wrong. That is why I call upon the Prime Minister to publicly commit, as I have today, to be guided in all future Senate appointments by an open, transparent, non-partisan process and, once appointed, have Senators sit independent from the political parties that serve in the House of Commons. And in so doing, we will remove partisanship and patronage from the Senate reforming it and improving it in a deep and meaningful way without ever having to touch the Constitution of Canada. Which brings me to my final point. As an unelected body, there are and ought to be limits to the Senate's power. These limits have expanded over time and have become conventions. These proposals are in keeping with that direction. As you all know, the Supreme Court of Canada will rule sometime soon on the exact limits of the House of Commons power as it relates to Senate reform. Let me be clear on this point. These proposals, while bold and concrete, are not the final word. They represent our judgment of how far we can go in the absence of guidance from the Supreme Court. In other words, I believe this to be the most meaningful action possible without opening up the Constitution. If the Supreme Court says more can be done, we will be open to doing more. In closing, let me say that there has been a lot of loose rhetoric from the other parties about Senate reform. Mr. Harper still would have you believe that he is a reformer at heart, despite eight years of hard evidence to the contrary. Canadians elected his party to bring change to this place. Instead, they got a more virulent version of the status quo, a hyper-political, hyper-partisan Senate that is, more than ever, the Prime Minister's private plaything. As for Mr. Mulcair, his promise to abolish the Senate as if he had a magic wand is either deliberately and cynical, cynically misleading or empty and foolish. He knows, or ought to know, that his promise would require the most significant amendment of the Canadian Constitution since the creation of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Mr. Mulcair may want to spend the next decade arguing about the Constitution. I prefer to help it, spend it helping Canadians solve their problems. When we are at our best, we liberals are reformers. 
Lorsque les institutions and publiques ne servent public plus l'intérêt du public, no nous prenons les mesures audacieuses pour les changer. Nous voulons construire des institutions publiques dans lesquelles les Canadiens ont confiance et qui nous serviront. Cela nécessite well. des changements that positifs positive et réels. Ces real propositions change. sont les and prochaines étapes de notre plan de Parlement ouvert qui vise précisément cet objectif. At our best, Liberals are relentless reformers. When public institutions fail to serve the public interest, we take bold steps to change them. We want to build public institutions that Canadians can trust and that serve Canadians. This requires real, positive change. These proposals are the next step in our Open Parliament plan to do just that. They won't be the last. Merci beaucoup. The Auditor General's report. How bad is the Auditor General's report um, that brought you to, to kick a lot of these Liberal senators out? I'm assuming some of them are, have been caught, caught in the same kind of abuse as Duffy and Wallen. The expense issues that we will be hearing more of uh, in the coming uh, months. Uh, are uh, part of what people are concerned with with the Senate and uh, my uh, open uh, posting on, on uh, internet of all expenses uh, uh, added to the Auditor General's investigation will go a long way towards uh, removing concerns Canadian have, Canadians have about expenses. Uh, but this is very much different. This is about uh, changing the nature of the Senate away from being a place of partisanship and patronage and improving its capacity uh, to serve Canadians in a way that they expect to be served. What we'd like to know is whether you had any information about expenses of Liberal Senators and whether that has prompted you to do what you're announcing today. No, I don't have any information about uh, expenses or the work being carried out by the Auditor General. And as far as I'm concerned, this is something that had to be done because it's the right thing to do. I could, I mean, I could perhaps have waited a few months uh, to hear what the Auditor General had found, but I don't think it's a good idea to wait when you realize that there is uh, a need for action, and there is a need for action on the Senate. That's what I'm proposing to Canadians, and what I've always said, without uh, affecting the Constitution, we can make change. But uh, not, not long ago, you voted against an NDP motion that would have done exactly what you're proposing now. Why is it the, uh, the right thing? Now and it was the, wrong thing then. the NDP's uh, position has long been to abolish the Senate, to uh, eliminate it, and to uh, embark upon a long and difficult path of constitutional negotiations. Uh, we have uh, come to the view that this is what we need to do. Uh, and because the, Senate, the uh, NDP actually put forward a similar motion at one point, uh, we look forward to having the support of the NDP uh, in this measure that will reduce uh, and eliminate partisanship and patronage from the Senate. Oui. What was the reaction of uh, Liberal Senators, uh, particularly those who've been in their position for a long time? How did it uh, work? Well, half an hour ago, I sat down with uh, Senators to inform them of my decision. It was uh, difficult on a personal level to have to say to these uh, people, many of them who have served uh, the Liberal Party of Canada with uh, great distinction over the years that they are no longer going to be Liberal Senators. But uh, as I see it, this is not uh, a matter of uh, personal relations. It's really a matter of doing what needs to be done in the interests of Canada, in the interests of our institutions. So even though it was a difficult conversation, it was the right thing to do, and I was encouraged by a certain number of senators who agreed with that decision. Mr. Camp, what happens to campaigning, for example, because a lot of senators campaign, including David Smith, uh, does that mean these independent senators no longer will do liberal work? Uh, these uh, independent senators will no longer be part of uh, the uh, parliamentary and operational team of the Liberal Party of Canada. Uh, we have freedom of association guaranteed by the Constitution. Uh, any uh, individual is free to take out a membership or to keep a membership in the Liberal Party of Canada. Uh, but uh, as far as political operatives, uh, these senators will no longer be uh, you know, liberal 
uh, organizers, fundraisers, activists in, in any form. You talked about an independent process. A nonpartisan process. What exactly do you mean? And does this mean that you will never uh, uh, speak to the senators? Uh, well, uh, the process by which senators will be appointed will be determined when the Supreme Court uh, renders its decision. Uh, we're waiting for that decision, but at the same time, we know that we can create a process that will be open, nonpartisan and transparent. I informed Mr. Cowan that he is no longer my parliamentary leader in the Senate. And I hope that in the coming years, I will have very good conversations with uh, legislators serving in the Senate on specific issues, but I will no longer have uh, the relationship of a leader to these people, and they are no longer part of my political party. First, the way you would characterize the reaction of your liberal Senate senators as you inform them. Second, Mr. Cowan, what happens to him, what happens to his office staff and their budget, please? Um, I, uh, about a half an hour ago, I sat down uh, with uh, the uh, formerly liberal senators uh, and informed them that they were indeed, uh, as of this moment, formerly uh, liberal senators and they were no longer liberal senators. Uh, it was a uh, difficult uh, conversation because I have uh, personal relationships and friendships with, uh, with uh, no, most if not all of them uh, and they are people who to varying degrees have served the Liberal Party of Canada uh, you know, over um, you know, many, many years. But this is not about personal relationships. This is about doing the right thing. And I didn't get into politics to do the easy thing. I got into politics to do the right things. Uh, and this is, uh, without a doubt, the right thing to do, uh, to serve Canadians in the right way with the parliamentary institutions that they have. Uh, Senator Cowan uh, will continue, uh, I have no doubt, uh, to serve the people of Nova Scotia and the people of Canada uh, with uh, grace and intelligence. Uh, he will, however, no longer be the Liberal leader in the Senate. Uh, the Senate will have challenges in terms of how it uh, reorganizes. And the easiest way, of course, uh, to launch that reorganization is for the Prime Minister uh, to listen to Canadians and to understand that removing partisans from the, partisanship from the Senate uh, is the way to move it forward and create a better institution that will better serve Canadians. Uh, but till now, I uh, am uh, encouraging uh, the formerly Liberal senators to organize and figure out uh, what the way forward is for them. Staff and budget, sir. Staff and budget of Cowan. Are they gone? Are they fired? Uh, the, uh, any staff and budgets uh, allocated by the Liberal Party of Canada is now gone. Uh, any uh, staff and budgets allocated uh, by the House of Commons, uh, sorry, by the parliamentary institutions, uh, is now up for uh, discussion between uh, the independent senators uh, and uh, the, uh, the parliamentary administration. Do you think that uh, those no, je, je senators should become independent only uh, in the future? Well, no, I'm asking the Conservative uh, government uh, to decide right now uh, to uh, make all of their senators independent, caucus, that, uh, to do what we have done, which is to include in their national caucus only people who have been elected by Canadians and who were, are part of their political party. Now, you only have one third of the senators in the Senate, and uh, the Auditor General's uh, audit is, or report is coming out uh, uh, soon. Isn't this a way of avoiding damage? Listen, I, I have 36 members of Parliament and I had 32 Liberal Senators. This is not a decision that I'm making lightly and I'm not doing this 
par avantage personnel for any personal benefit or advantage i'm doing this because i firmly believe that this is the way we will be able to better serve the people of canada i just want to understand the process what uh, brought this on what triggered this uh, decision which is quite a bold one and also uh, depuis, what uh, depuis will the reaction be elsewhere? Well, with all the Sénat, questions that have been uh, whirling uh, uh, about the Senate, I know that uh, many Canadians uh, simply don't understand why we have a Senate uh, in Canada and how that Senate should uh, be operating. The two other parties have taken fairly clear positions on this, but they're irresponsible positions, in my opinion. In other words, abolishing the Senate, something that cannot be done without reopening the Constitution, or electing senators, which once again cannot be done without reopening the Constitution. And we Liberals were caught in a situation where we were saying, as I was saying regularly, that we believe in Senate reform, but I don't believe in reopening the Constitution. And it was after consulting many, many Canadians that we decided, along with some senators who have been proposing this for some time, that the best way to reform the Senate and to restore the positive image of the Senate in Canadians' eyes would be to abolish the partisanship of that institution. Can I just ask you how this would work there? Should you ever become Prime Minister, I gather you would keep these senators or whatever senator is independent. How would you get legislation passed? Like, how would that work? Uh, that's exactly the same question people would have been asking Jack Layton had he formed uh, government in 2011. Uh, if uh, in the 2011 election uh, Jack Layton had become Prime Minister, uh, he would be faced with uh, a Senate uh, dominated by two political parties that weren't his. So there would have had to have been uh, significant operational changes in the Senate. Uh, there is, uh, that is uh, very similar to what I'm proposing, although I'm doing half the work right now by uh, making Senators independent. Uh, the, uh, what I will do is I will put forward the best possible legislation to serve Canadians and trust uh, that senators in their evaluation of the legislation uh, will either make improvements to amendments uh, or approve the amendment, uh, approve the legislation the way uh, uh, they, they would if they were serving their country or uh, send it back to us and say it's not good enough. Uh, the core functions of the Senate of uh, overseeing legislation, of judging whether it serves Canadians interests uh, in a good way or not uh, is preserved in this proposal, which is why it doesn't touch the Constitution. But, 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 at least if there was a parties in there, and for all the sins you've diagnosed probably correctly, at least they're nominally responsible to an elected parliamentary leader. And so if, if voters are unhappy with a Liberal senators or Conservative senators, we can take it out on the Liberals or Conservatives at, at the ballot box. Now you've got a group there who are unaccountable to absolutely no one. They can do whatever they want and they don't have to answer to you or any voter. That is why the open, uh, nonpartisan, uh, transparent appointment process that I look forward to seeing put in uh, will ensure that the quality of senators going forward uh, will be people who are focused on serving Canadians. And I can tell you from having known and worked with the 32 uh, Liberal senators, uh, that uh, formerly Liberal senators, uh, that uh, the focus has always has been on serving Canada to the best of their abilities. And over time, because of, over the, the 147 years of our history, uh, because the House of Commons has always been elected and therefore much more legitimate than the Senate, the Senate has never exercised uh, its full power, uh, which is on paper the same as the House of Commons. And that convention will continue that the legitimacy of wielding power of legislation will continue to remain in the hands of parliamentarians. Can those uh, 32 senators reorganize and get a le leader and work as a group in the Senate if they wish? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. The Senate and the senators will have to reflect on how they want to organize themselves 
and I do not claim to have any legitimacy in terms of imposing solutions on those uh, senators and the way they want to operate. However, I am counting on these uh, individuals to continue to serve uh, uh, Canadians as legislators who reflect on what is uh, right for the country. senators told you that their, uh, their expenses have been flagged by auditors as inappropriate? No, I have had uh, no uh, Liberal senators uh, come and, and tell me anything uh, about any, any senator, uh, any expenses. Uh, the open parliament plan that I put forward last fall uh, that was disclosing expenses online uh, for MPs and senators uh, has gone a long way towards uh, displaying and demonstrating a, a transparency and accountability on expenses. Uh, certainly the Auditor General will continue to do that. The, the issue of expenses is one that needs to be taken care of and is being taken care of. What I am taking care of today uh, is the partisanship and patronage that strikes at the very core of the